Welcome back everyone. Today we are talking about something pretty exciting and that is the Trek Powerfly 4. Now, disclaimer, this is really focusing on the European market. Most of these models are not available in North America. We're going to go across the entire lineup of the Powerfly 4 hardtail option and I'll make a video for the Powerfly 5, Powerfly FS4 and all the other variations that they have out there. In the United States right now, they only have a few options, but way back in Europe, they have a lot of different options. So we're gonna start off with the Powerfly 4 Gen 3. This one is your bare bones basic option. They haven't changed really anything in previous years. I'm looking at it right now, and overall, they've added a couple colors in the European market. So that's the radioactive red, which is a previous color they've had before with the Powerfly 5 and an all new Azure color, which has been popular in the Marlin series. The Roscoe 24 had it too. Gonna be a nice color, kind of floats both ways for anybody can ride it, not too girly, not too boy. Colory, all non-gender specific as usual. So this one still comes stock with a 500 watt Bosch motor, 85 Newton meters of torque coming out of the Performance CX motor. So this is Bosch's go-to option. It really works well. It's got tons of power. It'll climb any hill. If you've not test rode one of these, trust me, I've used and abused many different variations of electric bikes. And this one has more than enough for everyone. It really will climb pretty much any hill. It's more your balance and skill set that would be the holdback. The motor has the power for it. Most people can ride 32k an hour. Now you might not be able to go for as far as you would have compared to what you can on an e-bike, but you can hit those speeds and as soon as you stop pedaling, it just cuts that motor out and you coast to a stop really easily, really nicely. That is a key component of these bikes. They're bicycles first and not electric motorcycles. The drivetrain is a tried, true and tested Dior from Shimano. If you don't know what that is, Dior is a good level system. It's gonna shift really well. It's got a nice wide range. So it's one gear on the front, 10 on the back. You have a good size low gear range. So you're able to climb most hills on your own. And normally the downside would be the steepest of hills might become more tricky for some people, but you're on an electric bike, you're gonna have no issues on or off the trail with this option. So with the new Powerfly 4, as with last year, obviously not really changing anything to do with it. They've called it the Gen 3. There is minor tweaks coming, but overall nothing major changed. The frame styles, you've got medium and bigger with that straight top tube angle. So it's pretty low to step over anyway but small and extra small does that give that extra swoop down. There is no male and female modifications otherwise, so it's just based on your height. And obviously if you're a short man, you're just gonna have a lower step over anyway. It's not that big of a deal. The battery is still fully removable, so it has that removable integrated battery, the rib system. There is a key on one side. You can simply unlock it, pull the battery out, charge it on or off the bike. There's a charging port right on it, but Winter storage here is very important. They don't want that battery sitting around below freezing temperatures for long periods of time for the longevity of the battery, that is. Short term, one night might not be too bad, but it's that long term which is really gonna affect it. They do rate this battery for up to 50,000 kilometers of usage. Obviously towards the end, you might not get that full 50 to 100 kilometers range out of it, it might start deteriorating but you're gonna get a nice long life out of this. Even six to eight years, you're gonna get close to full performance. It's only those last couple of years where you might start noticing a decrease in charge level. Bosch does have a great calculator online via Trek's website and Bosch's where you can type in the terrain you're on, the wind speed, the tire choice, everything, and it'll tell you a perfect range for that charge, which is kind of cool. As this is the Powerfly series, they want you to do a lot of things with it. It's not just a true mountain bike, although it's got a good geometry for trail riding, it's definitely not a downhill race bike. So it does have all the rack mounts, a guard and protector underneath the motor just for extra protection, smart wheel size from Trek, so the wheels get smaller in the smaller frames. Brake wise, you have hydraulic disc brakes, they work great, and suspension pretty good suspension, nothing to win races over, but will be comfortable 
for most people spring and that won't make too much of a difference. Bike weight, we're at about 23.37 kilograms, 51 and a half pounds, which is pretty good actually. They've really cut that weight down. That 500 watt battery is a good range to it. Like say, I'm hearing people average 50 to 60 kilometers using a variety of modes, and that is gonna be more than enough for most people's rides. That's still a good couple hours of riding, and you'll charge it every night to keep up with that. That is no big deal. It does come with the two amp charger, so Bosch has a few different options. 2 amp and 4 amp. There's still a few bigger ones out there. I think 8 amp, but they were quite expensive at like $400 and didn't really sell too much. The 4 amp charges in about three or four hours. The 2 amp is four to six, I think it is. That is the base model Powerfly 4 Gen 3. The next model available that I've seen only in the Europe area is the Powerfly 4 625 Gen 3. And that one is simple and easy it just comes with a bigger battery. It goes from that 500 watt battery up to a 625. If you're gonna push that limit, it's gonna make a huge difference. Or if you're in a really hilly area and you're gonna be constantly running on higher mode, if you're gonna be using more electric, you may appreciate just the comfort in the back of your mind of having a bigger battery. And that I would recommend looking into. Otherwise, everything else is on the is on the bike is the same. The last option available in Europe and not available in North America yet is the Powerfly 4 Sport equipped. So again, per spec wise, it seemingly is near identical with all the important stuff, shifting brakes, suspension. Battery wise, they stick with the smaller 500 watt uh, battery option. So take that as it is. I don't know why, I'm surprised they didn't put the 625, but whatever. Really, this model is just a fully loaded package. I do like this. We have it in higher end models. FS4 and the FS9 are both in an equipped model and that adds fenders, a rear rack, and integrated lights, which a lot of people like. The rack and the fender on the rear works as one unit, so it works really nicely together, looks clean. A lot of people are looking for clean looking fenders. These are an overall commuter friendly bike. They're an adventure kind of bike. It might not be the most serious mountain biker using them. So these are creature comforts which are definitely worth the money to add on. And obviously you can add it on overall. The downside to this one is with all those additions, surprisingly, and honestly, I don't really know how they've done this. I looked at the specs to see where else they'd gain weight. This one jumps up to 56 pounds. So it's gained five pounds from a rear rack and plastic fenders. They do come with better quality tires. These are the same ones which are on the Powerfly, 4, Powerfly 9 or FS9. So it's a faster rolling commuter style tire, gravel tire, a little less mountain bikey, a little more commutery. But I just, I don't know where they got the five pounds from. I can't believe the stock XR2s on the Powerfly 4 Gen 3 would be that much lighter than an LT4. All right, so we've checked out what the bikes are doing and who are they for. The Powerfly 4 Gen 3, I think is for the gravel rider, mountain bike rider, and gonna do anything and everything with it, leaning towards more off-road world, obviously still capable on-road. The Powerfly 4 625 option is just for those people who are in the hills all the time, a little more technical, or know that already pushing a 20, 30K ride on their own human power, so they're gonna really push the limits on this one. And the Powerfly Sport 4 is just a super affordable option instead of going to that Powerfly FS9 equipped, which one's, which is fantastic. Comes with crazy suspension, crazy shifting and brakes, but obviously jumps up to twice the price of this one get rid of suspension, you could add a seat post suspension to it if you want, and you'd get a fast rolling commuter ready bike. Still capable in the off-roads, obviously more tame trails than what the other two options would be, but this is gonna really perform quite well for anyone who is commuting a little faster and all those integrated lights and features, they're just gonna look good, it's gonna perform good, and that is really the convenience factor of it all. Price-wise, they're all pretty affordable. Um, obviously more expensive than those cheap Amazon store ones, but these will run 10 times better, trust me. They are so smooth. The Bosch system you will not regret. Haven't had really any issues at all with them. Obviously that can change any time, 
but we've sold a lot of them and they just seem to perform very, very well, last a long time. We've had trades in with thousands of kilometers and it uses like as little battery as a brand new one. It's really impressive how well these are holding up. But now you've got the rundown, you know where you're at. Once again, I'm not sure if any of these will ever come to North America. The European e-bike market is twice as big, if not more, than that of the North American one. People commute a lot more by bike anyway there, and now the sales are really taking off, so it makes sense that they have a lot wider of a range and a more entry-level commuter, but, you know, can do the backcountry road or field crossing option with that Powerfly Sport 4 equipped option. The generation system and the naming system and the battery system make it sound very complicated. They're very long-winded names. They should definitely try and shorten them down. That would be my only change. Otherwise, get out there, have fun, and thanks for watching. Subscribe down below. There will be the full suspension options, which is an insane amount. That's why I thought I'd just blast them into one video. I thought about doing an individual video, but so they're so close to each other, every single model, yet so far at the same time, we're just gonna cram them in and get them done. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, good luck.